guys, and welcome to another episode of Sawfish TV. Is the day we're going to start the journey of the death cube or death tank, however you, however you want to say it. Today we're going to get the sand in, we're going to get the water in, and then we're going to add our heater and bacteria. Without further ado, let's get it cycled. Alright guys, I chose the Carib Sea Hawaiian Black Live Sand. I chose live sand versus dry sand because it comes with bacteria, which will help the bacteria cultures in the tank. And I also chose Hawaiian Black because of the contrast of the future corals and fish that would be going into this tank. I think it will look really great and fit in with the theme. Let's talk about the heater. So I got the Cobalt Aquatics 150 watt heater. I like this heater because I also use it in the Fluval Evo and it's really good if you're tight on space because of how slender it is, as you'll see in this video. And it's really accurate as well. It is fully submersible. And it has that super flat design, as it says, and a one-touch control system, which is one button to control the heater setting that you wish to uh, set it at. very simple yet effective heater. I like it. Here's the chart for your wattage heater for how big your aquarium is. We have the 150 watt which is rated for up to 40 gallons. Let's move on into our bacteria. Now I chose both of these bacteria sources because not only is it two different brands, different brands house different bacteria, but also I wanted to give Dr. Tim's bacteria a shot because I've heard really good reviews on this one. I've heard of people cycling in about three days. Now Biospira is another one that Dr. Tim uh, actually designed and manufactured Here's your uh, directions and your live nitrifying bacteria descriptions. And... But yeah, I really like this bacteria. I've heard great things. And it's to seed our tank. More bacteria, the better. That's what I always say. Can't go wrong with more biological filtration. Let's get to it. All right, so our first step is to put in the live sand. And I chose live sand because it comes with some bacteria in it. But some people don't like live sand because it could introduce some other things that you don't want. But I've always used live sand in all my tanks. And it also brings more bacteria and different strains of bacteria that you can get. Uh, more the merrier to culture our tank. Here's that Hawaiian black again, which I think is gonna look really nice. Let's do it. So one thing I like to do first when I'm setting up a tank is get the scape in first on the bare bottom. That way I can move in the sand around it to secure it in place. So that if you by chance decide to get something that might sift through the sand, it won't fall over per se, um, or lose balance, or tilt, or what have you. It's going to anchor it down some more. Versus if you don't, it can fall over, bust your glass up, or hurt your uh, corals or your fish. You don't want that. So we're going to put the sand around the scape, and then spread it through the, through the tank. Also just have this 120 pound bag. It should give me about an inch or so. Uh, sand bed, I don't want that deep of a sand bed. 
because I have plenty of biological filtration. Some people like to dump it. I like to do it by hand. It's slower, but it gets the job done. So this bag I picked up a couple weeks ago and for some reason it was leaking its water out so I had it in a bucket. It might be live still, it might not be, who knows, but I mean it's a lot easier to move around now that it's kind of drier than usually the live sand comes. Usually the live sand comes all nice and wet. Cover some skulls up, man. You don't want that. So here's this packet. It helps clarify it a little more. We'll dump it in once we get the water. Some people do it, some people don't. Depends on my mood, but we're gonna do it today. Biomagnet clarifier. My first time using this Hawaiian black sand. I have to say, I, I like it. It's not completely black. There's some white specks in there. Uh, it's a good contrast. All right, I say that's good. Let's get a close up view. Let's try to make it nice and even in the front. It's kind of covering up some skulls on the bottom. That's okay. That's okay. You never know when the water starts flowing, how this is gonna actually look. As of right now, I'm happy with how I put this in. 20 pound bag was the perfect amount of sand that I needed for this 32 gallon cube. Look at that. It's looking really cool already so far. Especially with that scape. I love the scape. So cool. See what I'm saying, how it's a nice contrast? It's like black with the white grains. It's gonna look really nice in this tank. All right, let's get on to our step two. Whew, working up a sweat, messing around with some sand. All right, step two. We're gonna put our equipment in because it's a lot easier to do that before you put the water in, which is step three. So here's our heater. I went with a cobalt Neotherm 150 watt. It says it's rated at 40 gallons, and it's always good to go higher than what gallons your tank is. Mess. No part of the fun though. I really like this heater. I use I use the 75 watt <clears throat> version of this in the uh, Evo, and it keeps the temperature perfect. And what I like about it, I like how sleek and slender it is. Look how flat that is. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to get it for the Evo. And I love it so much because it doesn't take up that much room at all, so I decided to get it for this cube. And it's super easy to set your temperature too. And the clip slides on there. Snaps in place. Alright, so let's let's put it in the third chamber here. We well, see that's the beauty of setting up a uh, new tank is because you can put your equipment wherever you like, set it up, and then you can move it later on while it's cycling. If you know, for adjustments needed. It's that easy. We put it in the third chamber with the return pump. Kind of mounted it up kind of higher because that way when the water's in, we can set the temperature and actually see it. The ever-growing pile of cords. Another fun thing with my setting up tanks. Cord management. All right, so the return pump comes with the cube already installed, so it's already down there, so I don't have to mess with that, which is awesome. So the second chamber, it comes with this carbon filter pad. 
which I am never going to use even after cycling, but especially for cycling, you remove this pad. Don't put any sort of carbon in there while you're uh, cycling because it defeats the purpose because you want your tank to get as gross and as nasty as possible so that it can go through any change once you put livestock in there. It can support any bio load, any grossness. So you want to get it ready. It's kind of like an immune system. It's like your body's immune system. You got to get sick to get healthy. As weird as that sounds. All right, that's trash. This is the tray for it. I probably won't use this ever again unless I feel a need to put some filter pad in here, which I will be putting, I'll be using pillow stuffing because it's a lot cheaper to get. And then the next, I wish this had some sort of handle on it, but here's your the bio cubes uh, stock media basket. So on top, I'm probably, this is where I'm going to run my filter floss. I'm probably going to put some Kimmy Pure Blue. Uh, yeah, Kimmy Pure Blue in here in a second. And if I need to do some other stuff, I don't know. But down here, we're going to put, if you're familiar with Marine Pure Balls, it houses your bacteria and they colonize your bacteria. But I found this. On Amazon, well actually, this whole bag on Amazon, these were in it, but I have my own uh, media bags so they could fit in the back of this cube. But this thing is full. It's one gallon of these highly porous balls for 20 bucks on Amazon. If you need some, let me know and I can send you the link or you can search for it, whichever. But yeah, we're going to put this in the bottom because this is going to be our biological filtration where the bacteria will house themselves. Let's see if, you can, see if we can get one of these balls up there nice and close. But yeah, you can see all kinds of pores up in there. What if I do it here? There you go. All right, so we're going to shove these in there. I'm going to do some finagling. Turn it kind of sideways so that the legs can go uh, on both sides of these so it can actually go down. Just gotta finagle your balls and wrap. Don't get me wrong, your bacteria can house on your rock as well and in your sand. But I always go with the saying, you can never have too much biological filtration. Biological filtration is key. It's key to a healthy tank. Don't care what you say. You got biological filtration, you don't need a skimmer. Just keep up with your water changes and add some bacteria every now and then. Up your game. All right, let's put this back in. Yeah, that's all you basically need when you're cycling a tank is get your biological filtration up to par, up to speed. And then you can start after three, four months, six months. Add some fish, add some coral, put a little bit more bacteria in there, up your bio load, handling capabilities. So yeah, I'm not gonna run any filter floss, filter pad, carbon, uh, pyrogen, community me pure blue, none of that stuff. Just biological filtration is key. Thank you. We're not done yet. All of our equipment's in, sand's in. So now all we have to do is get it wet. All right, so we got our bucket of water right here. I have this handy dandy pump, which is really nice for water changes or getting water from the bucket into the tank without making a big mess everywhere. I love it. Anyway, I want to talk about when setting up a new tank, sure, you can pre-mix your water in a bucket, in a barrel, uh, what have you, get it heated up to temperature, um, mixed in uh, all the way. But for me, when setting up a new tank, 
no livestock or anything, to me that doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do, I have fresh RODI water that I made myself, and we'll be putting it right into the aquarium. And then I'll be mixing the salt in the tank. Now I'm only doing this because there's no livestock whatsoever in here. So we're gonna put the water in here, get it circulating up to temperature, and then I'll start adding the salt little by little until our salinity is reached. I'm gonna plan on doing it at 1.024 or 25, uh, keeping the heater at 80 degrees uh, because the bacteria really thrive at that salinity and temperature. So I really want to get that bacteria going and going and going. I don't want it too cold or too hot because it's too hot. Uh, per Dr. Tim, if you haven't watched any of his briefings, he said that if the temperature's too cold, a different type of bacteria will grow. And then when you put your livestock and your coral in and you get it warmed up to the temperature that you want, it'll be a completely different bacteria. And it'll have to start all over again. If that makes sense. Even when it's too hot, it's a different strain of bacteria. So he recommended 1.024.25 salinity and 80 degrees when cycling a tank. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get it wet. I'm so excited. Are you? I am. Let's do it. Alright. Let's turn our pump on and get it wet. The moment of truth for Maiden Voyage. Got a kink? I got some kinks. I almost put it in the back then. Put it in the rear here. Getting wet, guys. We're getting wet. Don't worry, I'll be cleaning this glass. Don't worry. This is exciting. <laughs> I'm so happy. Death tank is happening. This is so cool. We got water. All right, guys. So this is really cool. Um, I'm really happy and excited. But let's fast forward. Now the tank is full of water. Now all we need to do is put in our bacteria and give it some food like ammonia. So I've already done this off camera. Actually took, this is the second day. Actually took me until about 10 o'clock at night to get all the RO water that I needed for the tank. So I decided to just wait till today, the second day, to record again after I fill it. So what I did was I filled the tank up with water and then, like I said, I put the salt directly into the tank. Um, once again, do not do that if there's livestock in the tank. If you're doing a water change, that is detrimental to them and it can kill them. It's bad juju. But since there's nothing alive in here yet, I went ahead and did the salt last night after getting the water in. So I had time to circulate and get warm and get to the salinity that it needed to be to. And then this morning I added in the bacteria that you've seen earlier. Added both bottles. I left a little bit of the Dr. Thames bacteria so that um, say tomorrow I can put some more in because I added the Dr. Thames ammonia as well, which the bacteria needs in order uh, to thrive and to live because that is their food source. And then that in turn, will create the nitrogen cycle. They eat the ammonia, consume the ammonia, 
turn it to nitrite, and nitrates happen. And then also with the sand bed or your substrate, whichever you use, give it a good stir the next day while you're cycling. Because there's a ton of trapped air and gas in the substrate. Because when I stirred it all up, this whole tank was just filled with bubbles. Uh, you want to get the bubbles out because uh, whenever you're ready to put livestock in and they serve the sand bed, you're going to have all that trapped gas and it will cause mini cycles or a full cycle and it could cause harm to the tank, to the fish, to the coral and you can have um, a bad outbreak of algae or worse, the tank will crash completely and it will be gone. Well. This is it for the, the death cube, getting it all set up and ready. Uh, now we'll let it sit here for a good three, four months, get it nice and cycled and keep squeezing in ammonia. And I'll be adding more bacteria as I go along. It never hurts to keep the bacteria up in there and create more bacteria for colonists. Remember, you can never have too much biological filtration, and I stress that. Thanks again for stopping by. Um, I'm really excited, and I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it the like, and if you want to follow along on this build, or all these other builds, the 45 gallon and the Evo, hit the subscribe button. I would very much appreciate it. Also, once I hit 100 subscribers, Boom, giveaway. Giving away the K1 Nano Protein Skimmer. Well, guys, this is it. Sawfish TV, out.